Good morning, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with the Trumpet for My People. Today is December 20th, 2017, and I want to share with you today about the connection between the abomination of desolation, the flight in winter, or not in winter, or not on the Sabbath, and the declaration of Barack Obama based on the sign of the dragon on December 17th, I am Sol Invictus. I am the unconquerable sun. Over the last few days, I have talked to you about the sign of the dragon based on the interview of Barack Obama with Prince Harry and how it was led, how we were led back to the Invictus Games, September 23 through 30, I am, the declaration of I am within the uh, uh, Invictus Games, and then we have the connection to Sol Invictus. So here we have a declaration, I am Sol Invictus. Okay, here what I'm showing is a calendar of March 2013 and December of 2017. For those who followed the teaching of Dewey Bruton, you will remember that part of his understanding of when the abomination of desolation would happen years before the event took place was this text in Matthew where it says that your flight not be in winter nor on the Sabbath. So as, as Dewey was investigating when the abomination of desolation would take place, he knew that it had to happen on a triumphal entry date and he knew it had to line up with the beginning of winter or the end of winter and the uh, and a Sabbath day and so what he found in his studies as he was searching for the date of the abomination was this day in March of 2013 where Friday the 22nd Friday, March 22nd, was the perfect and exact fulfillment of this text where it says, not in winter, nor on the Sabbath. Just as the calendar was in March of 2013, March 21st is the last day of winter. And then the 23rd is, the, is Sabbath, is, the, is Saturday. And so right there in between, we have this one day that fits right in between those two. Not in winter, winter is over, and not on the Sabbath. So it was Friday, March 22nd, 2013, the date of the triumphal entry that Barack Obama went to the Church of the Nativity. The birthplace of Jesus Christ. He stood where he ought not to stand. He defiled that place by not bowing, by not showing respect, by going there with President Abbas, who had defiled that place through the siege of the Church of the Nativity that the Palestinians did. And so he went with the, the man, the representative of those who defiled that place, and then they brought in the abomination and set up the abomination. And so here we have this, this, this uh, anomaly on the calendar, this amazing uh, coincidence in the calendar that in between winter and Sabbath, you have this day that was the, the triumphal entry day, and it was the day that Barack Obama stood in the, in the holy place, the birthplace of Jesus Christ. And now we have a connection to the solstice in, in winter, and it's leading us to the incarnation event. And see how these two are connected based on the birthplace of Jesus Christ and now coming to the incarnation of the Antichrist, it's all about this conjunction of the solstices. And now we have on the calendar, it's the same three days in December as it was in March of 2013. 
21, 22, 23. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The calendar is exactly the same. And we have this day then that leads us in between the winter solstice and Sabbath. And so what we have then is we, we're, we're looking at Friday the 22nd and why I put this uh, lightning bolt here. Friday the 22nd, because just as the same that the uh, abomination event took place here on Friday the 22nd, will also be the incarnation event, is right here. This is sa the Sabbath. This is the last day of Hanukkah. This is the Sabbath. The eighth day of Hanukkah is the Sabbath. This is also the first day of winter. Friday, December 22nd, is the first day of winter. And it is the Sabbath, the eighth day of Hanukkah. So this day, the 21st, is the day of our flight, is the day of the rapture. One day before the incarnation event and the winter solstice. The abomination of desolation, Matthew 24, 15. Flight not in winter, nor on the Sabbath. Verse 20, right here in Matthew 24, we have all these details that show us how the abomination is connected with this time frame of not in the winter or on the Sabbath. Now we have a connection of all of our uh, number of days. We have the October 9th, 2009 Nobel Peace Prize where the seven-year covenant begins. We add three and a half years, 1260 days. We come to the abomination event which is the solstice, the spring solstice, the day after winter. Then we add 1,335 days to that. We come to the beginning of the Revelation 12 sign. 1,335 days from the abomination is the beginning of the, of the Revelation 12 sign, November 16, 2016. And then the sign of captivity, 400 days of captivity, at the end of the 400 years, there was deliverance, just as there will be 400 days, a day for a year, a day for a year. Just as there was 400 years of captivity in Egypt, so there was 400 years under Turkish rule from 1517 to 1917, and the in 400 years, Jerusalem was liberated. So 400 years, 400 days, one day for a year. And the Revelation 12 sign is the sign of the birth of the anti-Messiah, the birth from a virgin. Just as Jesus was born out of a virgin, so the anti-Messiah is born out of a virgin. This is all connected to the Revelation 12 sign. March 22nd plus 1,335 days brings us to the beginning of the Revelation 12 sign. Okay, Hanukkah is also connected to September 23rd and 30th by our 80 days birthing ritual of the female child. So here we have our calendar for December 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And the last day before winter is Thursday the 21st. Thursday the 21st is the last day before winter. The end of the solstice is Friday the 22nd. That is the eighth day of Hanukkah. And the eighth day of the feast is a, is a Sabbath. The, just as the eighth day of tabernacles is a Sabbath, the eighth day of Hanukkah is a Sabbath. So we have the Sabbath and winter on Friday the 22nd. The last day before winter is Thursday, December 21st. Then we have our other two signs that can join on the 21st. We have peace and safety, a UN special session. UN special session in place for Thursday, December 21st. This is the peace and safety declaration. When they say peace and safety, sudden destruction. 
This also connects to the sign of Jerusalem. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by their enemies and the whole uh, meeting, the special session has to do with Jerusalem. So all this is conjoining on Thursday the 21st. Pray that your flight will not be in winter or on a Sabbath. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Peace, safety, sudden destruction, all has to do with agreements within the United Nations. Jerusalem being the centerpiece of the revelation, the centerpiece of the prophecy. Security Council, the United Nations, for when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, they shall not escape. When you shall see Jerusalem encompassed with armies, then know that the desol desolation thereof is near. This is all related to the declaration of the Muslim nations. It's a, it's a Muslim resolution that they are trying to resolve and they have called based on a petition of the Muslim nations. They have called for this special session. They want an answer to, the, 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 to Jerusalem. They want an answer to the question of Jerusalem. Within the United Nations, this is where they are bringing down these meetings. This is what they have proclaimed as their goal to disarm the world, to bring peace and safety. This is the goal of the United Nations. This is the location of the agreements of the biblical Babylon. This is the location, the headquarters of the United Nations being the biblical fulfillment of mystery Babylon. Pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Very clear in Matthew that when this moment comes in winter or close to winter, not on winter, not on the Sabbath day, then there shall be great tribulation. This is giving us the timing of the beginning of the Great Tribulation. Israel is the burdens, burdensome stone. Jerusalem, the epicenter of all prophecy. How the destiny of the holy city will affect the future. Why the meeting with Jerusalem is the key marker that will be the sign of of the end, the sign of his coming. It shall come to pass in that day that I will dis that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12 9. I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Warning to all the countries that are coming against Jerusalem. God Almighty has declared. He will destroy you. Palestinian minister calls for emergency meeting of Arab League over Jerusalem. Right now, in these last days of December, since the beginning of December, everything has ramped up. Jerusalem, the centerpiece. Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Jerusalem, the capital of Palestine. 57 Muslim nations have come together to make a declaration. They're bringing that to the United Nations. They want international recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Palestine. Jerusalem is the center of this prophecy. When the city of Jerusalem came into view, Jesus wept over it. Why did Jesus weep over Jerusalem? O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets 
and stones those sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Luke 19, 41 and 42. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The United Nations is not going to bring the peace that Jerusalem desires, the, the peace that Jerusalem needs. It is the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Messiahs, the Lord of Lords and the King of all Kings. He is the one who has brought the peace, but you have not, you would not, you did not receive it. It has been hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Luke 19. What does it say? What is the reason the destruction is coming? The days will come when your enemies will build an embankment against you, encircle you, hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize what? What did you not recognize? What did they not recognize? They did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. They did not recognize that in 2017, the year of Jubilee, the Revelation 12 sign, the last biblical feast written in the New Testament, the Feast of Dedication, flight in winter on Sabbath, Jesus walked in the temple, in Solomon's porch on the day, on the Feast of Dedication, proclaimed himself to be the door. You did not recognize. Before I close, I want to talk to you about one more passage of Scripture. In Luke 21, we see the signs of his coming, and he talks about, Jesus talks about the destruction of Jerusalem. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation is near. Then it talks about the coming of the Son of Man. There will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars. On earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the earth will be shaken, of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. And it gives us an exhortation at the end of this passage about the importance of watching. Remember here where it said they will not leave one stone on, on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Luke 21, 34. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, or gluttony, drunkenness, and cares of this life. And that day come on you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Isn't this what we are seeing today? 
not only in general across the world, but especially now in this time of Christmas, the season of Christmas. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing or gluttony, drunkenness, the cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. As many people throughout the world say they celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus reminded us and told us plainly that we must remember the day of his death until he comes. Do this in memory of me. Search the scriptures and you will see Jesus never told us to remember his birth. He told us to remember his death. He told us to always keep in mind his death until he comes. We are to always remember the coming of Christ. How many people look at the time of Christmas as a possible time of his return? Because as we celebrate the birth of Christ, for those who celebrate the birth of Christ, the death of Christ is primary in, in the message of Jesus, and it's the, it's the promise of his second coming, the blessed hope of the church. And so people live their lives, they go about living their lives in gluttony and drunkenness, the cares of this life and the and the, the materialism and they're consumed by worldliness and by all the things this world has to offer when Jesus is at the door and right now how many people are are embedded in the Christmas season, but this is 2017. This is the year of Jubilee. We just had the Revelation 12 sign. We had the solar eclipse. We have all the blood moons. We had all the signs that have come over the last five and even ten years. Since 2007, on the last day of Hanukkah, when Oprah Winfrey declared that Barack Obama is the one, the last day of Hanukkah. Ten years, folks. This is a sign for the ten virgins. Ten years of warnings from Oprah Winfrey on the last day of Hanukkah in 2007 declared Barack Obama as the one. How many people opened their eyes right there? Something is not right. Something is not going correctly. Something is not as it should be. Why this declaration? Why this way to present this man? He is just a man. How could they say he is the one? How could Newsweek come out and say, God of all things? How could Newsweek come out and say, the second coming of Barack Obama? People who have had their eyes opened have been awakened to the time that we are living in. And just this week, through all the revelations, I am Sol Invictus. I am the unconquerable son, leading from the abomination, back at the spring solstice, to the incarnation, in the winter solstice, in the year of Jubilee. I don't think there's any doubt left at all that we have arrived. And so this is the, the way that the Lord has given me to present this today. And I would ask you that we could pray together. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you glory and honor and thanks and praise for the power of your revelation and for the understanding that you have given to us from your word, Lord God. We do not want the sudden destruction to come upon us. We want to be uh, awake and understanding. We do not want to be blind. We want to watch and pray that that day would not come upon us, that we would not be caught in the snare. 
God, we pray for mercy. We pray for your hand of protection. We pray for the power of, of your name to be magnified and glorified in this world. And Lord, even in judgment, show mercy. Even in judgment, show mercy, Lord. We thank you, God, for your revelation. We thank you for your understanding. And we thank you for your love and, pr and protection. And even, Lord, your grace upon those who are left behind. Father, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy upon the left behind. We give you glory and honor, Lord God. Your name is forever praised. And all the enemies of God shall be destroyed in due time until you come and make your enemies your footstool. We thank you and praise you and give you glory and honor. May all the glory and the honor be yours now and forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.